Well, Linux doesn't have to be hard for the average user that just requires a web browser, it can be quite confusing in some other areas. Audio, for example. Let's say you have a USB dongle for your wired or wireless headset and it shows up twice for some reason. What about surround sound and custom audio profiles? Does DTS, the Dolby solutions and similar work and how can you enable them? In today's video, we are going over some of the most common questions when it comes to audio in Linux, how you can get your audio system working without entering a bunch of terminal commands, and ultimately why a lot of it is just bad advertisement. Let's get straight into it. When it comes to audio on the Linux desktop, your experience may vary depending on the device you use. Generally speaking, Linux should basically support everything that uses one of your PC's audio connectors, or anything that runs over USB as long as they actually follow the appropriate specs. Which isn't always the case. More specialized devices like audio interfaces that require some sort of proprietary software are often hit or miss, while headphones, microphones and headsets usually don't make any fuss, even if the software is missing. But even that is not so simple. See, on some devices, like the wired Logitech G Pro X headset that come with a USB dongle, you might see two options in the drop-down menu. One for analog and one for digital output, instead of just one singular option. The analog option is traditionally there for regular and, well, analog audio checks. USB devices, on the other hand, are using digital signals. But do not confuse them here. Because no matter what you choose, both these signals will be digital for them. The difference is that with analog, the audio stream first passes through our PC sound card, whereas with digital, it would get sent directly to the device itself. Which one's the better option? Well, the thing is that USB dongles have a tendency to report functionalities that the input controller itself might have. Our digital signal here reports as SPDIF, which would mean coaxial or optical, but the USB dongle does not actually have an optical output. The controller within might support it, but it's just not used. So for these two headsets, which don't have a fully fledged sound card in the dongle, the correct option would be analog, so that the signal gets properly processed by a sound card. If you are unsure that it's the same case for you, then you can alternatively also switch between the two modes. If the digital output has much lower volume, then this means that the sound card on the USB dongle is just not intended for passing the signal directly to it. And on Windows, it's handled the same by the way. If you activate surround sound via some proprietary software, you usually cannot save it to the dongle for offline use, since these things are done by Windows and not actually the dongle itself. The digital output should only be used if the device on the other side actually understands it. How do you know? Well, it either has to be an optical or coaxial connector, like it states right here, or you send the signal over HDMI to an external audio system. And that's it. You use just one of the audio jacks or USB dongles, you usually choose analog. You have a dedicated sound system with its own controller, a TV or similar, you choose digital. And if your system shows up as supported, then you only get one option anyway. Right, so let's talk about surround sound. First of all, if you have a surround sound capable system, then there are two ways on how you can get it working. First method, you just hook it up and see if it automatically gets detected as being 5 or 7.1 capable. Or two, you connect it like mentioned earlier via SPDIF or HDMI and choose the digital output if it isn't detected automatically. Afterwards, you go to the software store of your distribution and search for Payvoo Control. This is an application that gives you more control over your audio devices, like boosting the volume beyond the default limit, added latency if your audio is out of sync for some reason, or if you're using the digital output or a supported system to enable certain audio formats like DTS or TrueHD for example. But be aware, these formats are meant for devices that can actually understand them. So systems that are particularly built for them and offer everything to actually make it work. 5 to 7 actual speakers that is. These options are not meant for headphones that advertise themselves as being DTS capable, because they actually aren't. Most headsets only have two speakers, so there is no way to actually support surround sound. And now, circling back to analog versus digital, this is why we usually choose analog for them, since the processing is being done on the computer, just like it happens on Windows when you enable it via their software. So basically, while these headsets supposedly support surround sound, it's actually just emulated. And I generally advise against it. The reason being that regular stereo is already optimized for spatial audio, so that sounds already sounds like they're coming from a certain direction. 
And if you still want to use it, then games or movies that support surround sound usually do a much better job at mixing them than the virtual surround sound by the operating system. Like you can manage to create a virtual surround system like in the proprietary software solutions on Linux. But it's not really all that great, which is also the reason on why there aren't any graphical options out there yet. When it comes to adjusting the sound of your stereo, however, Linux has all the right tools. With the application Easy Effects, or if that's not working on your system, Pulse Effects, you can create custom equalizer profiles to boost footsteps for example, adjust your microphone so that it doesn't pick up any small sounds, and we even have access to specialized features. For example, on Windows you might be able to use Blue Voice, which gives your microphone a boost in clarity. On Linux you can enable the speech processor in Easy Effects or Pulse Effects, and it essentially does a similar thing. For surround sound, you generally want to stay on stereo or the optimized versions by developers or publishers. Or you have a true surround system anyway, which should be Linux compatible either way. Does it support every standard yet? Well, of course not, but for a start, it's probably enough. So summarized. If you connect a headset or a similar device via an audio jack, that's an analog signal. If you connect it via USB and it shows two options, analog is again usually the better one, unless the vendor openly states that the dongle or connected device is supporting hardware decoding on audio streams and it sounds nice. And for surround sound systems, you either select them via the drop down menus or enable the appropriate standards on their digital output. Still sounds a bit complicated, and I agree, this stuff should be a lot easier, but up until that's the case, you now know how to handle your sound devices. And that's where I leave it. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching my first video in 2025. And all that's left to say is good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.